So today we are going to talk about the pterygopalatine fossa, right? It's a small bony space in the skull and it's pyramidal shape. So what I will do, I will draw the pterygopalatine fossa here first and then I will tell you what are the neighboring structure so that you develop the orientation that uh, pterygopalatine fossa is exactly present where in the head. So first of all, pterygopalatine fossa is a sort of pyramidal space right this is its suppose face interior side this is the top of the fossa this is the back of the fossa right and it's a paired structure there's one pterygopalatine fossa on the right side of the skull and of course there's one on the left side uh, here I'm drawing the right side of the skull now the first question is this pterygopalatine fossa right a space in the bones of the skull where it is exactly located what is the exact position in head and neck right let me draw some familiar structure which everyone knows for example orbit here is your orbit all of you know what is orbit and it houses the eyeball and related structures now first thing which you can see in this diagram that pterygopalatine fossa is uh, basically just inferior to the apex of the orbit right this is the this area the back of the orbit this is called apex of the orbit pterygopalatine fossa is just below the apex of the orbit secondly here in front here in front there's a bone you must be loving this bone because it has teeth and helps you to chew lot of things what is this Maxilla. So second important information which I will love to give you that this pterygopalatine fossa it is just on the back of the maxilla. Which part of the maxilla? Of course it's behind the upper part of the maxilla and inner side of the maxilla. Supromedial part of the maxilla. It is behind the supromedial part of the maxilla. Then other important relationships before we go into detail. What is here? Interior cranial? fossa and what's here yes this is middle cranial fossa right and this is yes this is sphenoid bone body of the sphenoid bone here and this is pterygoid process right now you can see that basically this fossa is below the apex of the orbit behind the maxilla especially behind the Supra medial part of the maxilla and it is antero inferior to the middle cranial fossa. It's very strategically located, right? And of course, it's just anterior to the pterygoid process of the sphenoid bone. Is that right? Now, let's define it. What is pterygopalatine fossa? Pterygopalatine fossa is a small bony space right bond space bounded by the bony structures on the lateral side of the skull it is placed just below the apex of the orbit just behind the supramedial part of the maxilla and antero inferior to the what is this middle cranial fossa uh, just in front of the pterygoid process of the sphenoid bone you know exactly what is now before now you know its relationship with the orbit you know its relationship with the maxilla you know its relationship to the middle cranial fossa and of course here, here is your what is here? Process. Here is your? Yes. Pharynx. Nasopharynx. You know its relationship to the nasopharynx. Nasopharynx is postro inferior. And if you go purely inferior, what is this? This is oral cavity. Oral cavity. So what are important relationship? There above it has apex of the orbit. In front it has maxilla. On the postro superior angle it has middle canal fossa behind it has pterygoid process and if you really look at the angle postro inferior it is directed towards nasopharynx is that right and if you go below purely from this you will end up in the oral cavity am i clear now to it has very important and <coughs> intimate relationship with the nose also and infratemporal fossa so let me draw one more diagram i'll draw one more diagram where i will show its relationship with the infratemporal fossa and the nose right look at it 
you have a okay here are your big ears right and big smile just for orientation uh, here happens to be your nose it happens to be your nose right nasal cavity this is not very now on the side there are eyes of course he, what is the relationship of pterygo palate and fossa with the nose actually it is on the side of the let me tell you exactly where it is yes yes right pterygo palate and fossa and left pterygo palate and fossa and it is present on the sides of the nose but where on the side of the posterior deep part of the nose of course not on the front of the nose on the back right in the nasal cavity right when you go enter nasal cavity and you move posteriorly right very posteriorly on the right and left pterygo palate and fossa is there right it means pterygo palate and fossa on its medial wall this is its medial wall this is in this is in close relationship with nasal cavity its medial walls are in close relationship with the nasal cavity and if you look on the side okay i think ears have been displaced too much down no problem these are mobile ears and here on this side this is infra temporal fossa here is your temple isn't it that's right here is your temple and below the temple here is infra temporal this area this is infra temporal fossa i will not go into anatomical detail of in infra temporal fossa that will have in another lecture but right now you just trust me on the sides of the uh, on this side right on the lateral side of what is this pterygo palate and fossa there is infra temporal fossa right now why i am making this diagram because i want to make it clear to you that medially it can communicate with nose nasal cavity and laterally it is open to infra temporal fossa right now you have the three dimensional image of pterygo palatine fossa come here please yes so you can make uh, like this like this these are two yeah these are two pterygo palatine fossa i will come on this side right this is the right pterygo palatine fossa this is the left pterygo palatine fossa now you will tell me the structure at the top what is this orbit right in front maxilla these two are maxilla at the top there are orbit inside nasal cavity very good outside infra temporal fossa and behind above middle cavity fossa is it right now we'll talk about the bones which the bones which are present in this relationship have a seat thank you now we'll talk about the bony boundaries it's very simple what are the boundaries of this fossa first of all this part of what is this maxilla this is in front anterior boundary anterior boundary is made by what maxilla now if i look at the maxilla from the back right let me make a very simple diagram of maxilla right this is top of maxilla right this is the lateral side and this is the back of maxilla posterior side of maxilla right now actually fossa is present at this position right so it means this part of the maxilla in relationship with the fossa this part of maxilla make the anterior wall of the pterygo palate and fossa now what is this part this is supramedial part of posterior wall of maxilla or infra temporal wall of the maxilla am i clear to everyone yes of course i'm drawing the right side right so this is the anterior wall so we can make it that anterior wall of pterygo palate and fossa is made by the which part of the maxilla supramedial yes. part supramedial part of the posterior wall of the maxilla or infra temporal wall of the maxilla and this is the top a uh, front now at the top upper boundary now here is the body of sphenoid bone 
medially and laterally the greater wing of sphenoid now top of it is made by the top structure here this is the body of sphenoid body of sphenoid bone so in front there is maxilla at the top what is this body of sphenoid now we go to the behind behind it is another part of the sphenoid bone you know sphenoid bone has body of sphenoid lesser wing of sphenoid greater wing of sphenoid right so and below that let me make a very simple diagram of sphenoid bone this is sphenoid bone these are lesser wings on the sides these are greater wing we are looking from the front we are looking from the front to the sphenoid bone now sphenoid bone here it has structure which is going down these two structure right structure and left structure these are called pterygoid processes of sphenoid bone what are these pterygoid processes of sphenoid bone am i clear anyone who is confused okay so what is this these pterygoid processes of sphenoid bone they are just on the back of this fossa let me make it more clear that here is body of sphenoid and behind it this is going down what is it pterygoid process of sphenoid bone so here in this diagram you can see pterygoid process of sphenoid bone here this is pterygoid process of which bone sphenoid bone is that right now again front is the maxilla above is the body of the sphenoid and behind it has pterygoid process of sphenoid bone with adjacent part of greater wing of sphenoid right with adjacent part of interior face of the adjacent part of greater wing of sphenoid now i will ask you the question interior boundary yes all of you say supramedial part of maxilla say loudly roof is made by body of sphenoid bone <coughs> and posterior wall is made by pterygoid process of pterygoid process of sphenoid bone with adjacent part of the greater wing of sphenoid of interior of its, its interior wall is it clear any question up to this now bottom actually bottom become narrow because maxilla is trying to approach the pterygoid so you can say it become like this and from here it become like that but there is something that is closing this bottom i will tell you what is this something there is a piece of bone here right actually maxilla is going backward slanting backward pterygoid processes downward and little forward and while they are approaching each other uh, there is a little gap which is closed by a bone and i will tell you exactly what is that bone because sometimes students get confused and that bone has very very tricky special relationship with the pterygo palatine fossa right uh, i will make the lateral wall of the nose and in the lateral wall of the nose uh, a bone called palatine bone right is very important now let me make the palatine bone of right side and the this is a perpendicular plate of palatine bone on the right side and this is this is nasal septum right right nasal cavity left nasal cavity it has lot of other bones but i am only showing which bones palatine bone this is right palatine bone l shape and this is left palatine bone is that right now these two palatine bones okay let me make them with that little this is perpendicular plate of palatine bone this one is perpendicular plate of palatine bone and this is horizontal plate of palatine bone right now right and left palatine bones now what is the relationship of these two bones with the pterygo palatine fossa pterygo palatine fossa is exactly
Now, you can see this is the medial side of the trigopalatine fossa. This is also medial side of the trigopalatine fossa. And boundary, what bone is on the medial side? Perpendicular plate of palatine bone. Upper part of the perpendicular plate of the palatine bone. Yes. Right? So medial wall of this fossa is made by the upper part of the perpendicular plate of palatine bone. I will make it again this structure so it becomes more clear. Let me draw the one fossa, other fossa, right? Here I will make perpendicular plate. Now you can see that this is the fossa, right? This is the medial side of the fossa. Medial side of the fossa is bounded by the upper part of the perpendicular plate of palatine bone. Of course, here is the nasal cavity, here is the septum, right? Now, this palatine bone here, it has a very special process which is going laterally and this process is called pyramidal process. What is it called? Pyramidal, pyramidal process. And here also, this pyramidal process, right? Now, this pyramidal process on this side, this is the pyramidal process. It is moving outward. And you know, it is just below the pyramidal process of palatine bone is just making floor of pterygopalatine fossa. And this structure, you know this one, what is this? This is pyramidal process of palatine bone. It is the pyramidal process of palatine. palatine bone, right? Because it is coming and moving laterally and in front is the maxilla and behind there is pterygoid process and maxilla and pterygoid process are filled by the, the gap between them is filled by the pyramidal process of palatine bone. Am I clear? So how the floor of this fossa is made? Rapidly. Pyramidal process of palatine bone, but it is a very narrow floor. As maxilla, lower part of the maxilla, back of the maxilla, and pterygoid process, they approach each other. So this gap is filled by the pyramidal process of palatine bone. Plus, palatine bone also make medial wall of the pterygopalatine fossa. Am I clear? Is it clear? Another thing here, uh, this pterygopalatine. this uh, palatine bone, this palatine bone has two processes like this at the top. One process, okay, I'll make it like this and this and here. Now, actually there is one process moving like this and other is like that and here was the pyramidal. Is that right? This is perpendicular plate and this was horizontal plate, this is orbital process and this is sphenoidal process, palatine bone, because if I show the palatine bone here, I remove the fossa totally, uh, you can see the palatine bone is somewhat like this, you understand, this is palatine bone looking at you, right, which part of the palatine bone, perpendicular plate, upper part, it has one orbital surface and it has one sphenoidal now, if you look at this in between these two part, orbital and sphenoidal, there is a depression. There is a depression. This is orbital process, this is sphenoidal process and there is a notch. And at the top what was there? Body of sphenoid. And this hole, this gap is called sphenopalatine foramen. What is this called? Sphenopalatine foramen. Sphenopalatine foramen is present in the medial wall of pterygopalatine fossa and it is communicating the fossa with the nasal cavity. Am I clear? Yes. yes. Any confusion? Sir, uh, how uh, fissures are? I will go to pterygopalatine fissure also. Right? Uh, just one minute. So is it clear? Now, let's make the structure from the front again to make some more orientation.
Now, what was this bone here on this side? Am I clear? And this is nasal set. Okay. Now, th now, this here, I told you there was a foramen. What was this? Foramen. Spino palatine. Here was orbital process and here was sphenoidal. Here was orbital and here was sphenoidal. And below, if you look, look at this, what was this foramen here? Spino palatine. And this fossa helped this tirico palatine this uh, foramen to communicate with nasal cavity. Am I clear? Anyone has any question? A simple diagram, this can be shown like this. Very simple. That here is your nasal cavity. And what is this? Tirigo? Palatine? Fossa. And this opening. Yes, now you should be. What are these openings? Phenopalatine? For a man. Okay. Now another thing. On lateral side, lateral side, what was here? Infra? This was infratemporal? Fossa. Now, actually, the wall laterally is deficient. In front there was? Maxilla. Maxilla behind there was? Dirigate process. Below this gap is filled by? <laughs> this process. But upper part, this gap is left open. This open area on the lateral side, you understand it? Lateral. Communicate with the infratemporal fossa. Is that right? This open crack or fissure from the lateral side of the tirigopalatine fossa, more laterally is open or communicating with the infratemporal fossa. Right? It means this area is open to infratemporal fossa. Now, this uh, area which opens laterally into infratemporal fossa, it is bounded posteriorly by the pterygoid process. process and anteriorly by the maxilla. maxilla. So it's called pterygo maxillary fissure. Oh. What is it called? Pterygo maxillary fissure. So we can say that, yes, please come here. Let's make you make it like this. Okay, now this is right side. I'm holding the right trigopalatine fossa. Is that right? In my case here, deep. Right. Here, oh, please relax. From here it open into infratemporal fossa. In, in, uh, in front there is maxilla and behind there is pterygoid process. So it's trigomaxillary fissure. Communicating infratemporal fossa with the trigopalatine fossa. And here, there is a little hole on the medial side. This. This is a little hole. What is this? Sphenopalatine fossa. It is communicating where? It is not uh, sphenopalatine fossa. It is sphenopalatine foramen. Please correct me. You know, I am a little lost man. Okay. So, these medial and lateral wall are clear? Front wall, you know, what are the main structure in the front? Maxilla. And behind tirigate process and middle clinical fossa. Right? Now, I will go into further detail of this structure. Please, thank you. So, now we can say that Tirigopalatine fossa is a small bony space on the lateral side of the skull, interiorly bounded by the back of the maxilla, posteriorly bounded by the front of the tirigoid plate, superiorly bound by the under surface of sphenoid body. body, laterally it is open through tirigo. Maxillary fissure into infratemporal fossa. Right? Okay. I will again go to basic diagram. Orbit. Why I draw the orbit? Because most of the people know where is orbit at least in the head and neck. <laughs> right? Okay. Here is your. Now I am making a simple. What was this? Trigopalatine? Fossa. And what is here? Or hard palate, you can say if I remove the teeth, in that section we can see what is this? Hard palate. Here is anterior canal fossa. 
am i right and here it is yes here it is middle cranial fossa is that right and of course this is and this, what about this Tidigard process. Any question up to this? There's no? You're very clear about all these structures? Right. Now, we'll talk about different communications from this. First of all, in this way, then I will make a three-dimensional picture. Actually, interiorly, it communicates to the orbit. Yes. Interiorly, it communicates to the orbit through the medial side of infraorbital fissure. What is this opening? For example, you are standing here. You are standing here. Right? If you look, yes, I'm standing in where? I'm standing inside the Tirigo Palatine fossa. Just a rapid understanding. I'm standing in the Tirigo Palatine fossa. Here is maxillary bone. Here is Tirigard bone. Here it is. It is right. Palatine bone, below is the pyramidal process of, so I'm standing on the fossa, in the arterigo palatine fossa. Now, if I look at the top, there's orbit, here, there's orbit, but actually the whole of orbit, there's a communication between arterigo palatine fossa and the orbit, and this is actually medial end of what? Inferior infraorbital fissure. So if I want to jump from here, to the orbit, I will jump through infraorbital infra fissure. Is that clear? If I want to jump into nose, I will jump through sphenopalatine for a man. If I want to jump outward, to inf I will fall into which area? Infratemporal fossa. Through what? Terigo maxillary fissure. Now, how many fissures we have talked about? One fissure was infraorbital fissure, inferior orbital fissure. And one we have talked about, terigo maxillary fissure. But we have to take care of our back also. Is that right? It's very important. Always watch your back. Right? Lot of activity there going on. So what is behind? What is behind here? Uh, first I will show in diagram and then we'll see. Otherwise, actually, this is middle kind of fossa. From here, there's a communication. What is this? Foramen? Rotundum. What is this? So we can say that posteriorly this fossa communicate with middle cranial fossa through foramen rotundum. Then we come. Yes. Now here is another foramen. Uh, this is called foramen lacerum, lacerated foramen. Actually, it's really not a foramen uh, because foramen is usually thrown. Uh, it has a uh, gap in the base of the skull surrounded by multiple bones. I will not go into detail of foramen lacerum, but anyway, here is foramen lacerum. And th of course, this is your bones, bony structure. Now, the important point which I want to highlight here, that there is a canal from the back, and it is reaching upper part of foramen lacerum, like this and this. This is called Tirigate Canal. It is from the back of it. Tirigate Canal. Is that right? I will tell you later what are the structures passing through this. And then from here, there is another canal which is going backward and eventually ending up into nasopharynx. What is this canal called? Palato. What? Palato vaginal? There is vagina here? What happened, you guys? What is this? Palato vaginal canal. Why we call it palato vaginal canal? Yes, Fahad. Because it extends from palate to Hawa? It extends from palate to vagina? Oh my god, you have distorted concepts. Right? <laughs> so why we call it palato vaginal canal? I think it should be a simple name, pharyngeal canal. Right? But because old uh, I say anatomist our ancestors, they were probably have powered with sex and they call it palatovaginal canal, yes. Why we call it palatovaginal canal, yes. Actually, let me tell you. This is having two boundaries, this canal. One is palatine bone yes. 
and other upper lower boundary a one is palatine bone other is the vaginal process of medial pterygoid plate you know pterygoid process has a lateral pterygoid plate and medial pterygoid plate medial pterygoid plate has a notch which is called has a little bony area which is called vaginal process which is not the other vagina you keep on thinking all the time it is basically a vaginal process of medial pterygoid place right so basically this canal is present between the vaginal process of medial pterygoid plate and the palatine bone so we call it palato vaginal canal but simply we can also call it pharyngeal canal so you really know it is nothing to do with the vagina in the bottom right it's here in the head okay so these are the three posterior activities behind foramen rotundum communicating to the middle canal fossa pterygoid canal canal are tube like structures uh, pterygoid canal communicating pterygo palatine fossa with the middle canal fossa through the foramen laterum and pharyngeal canal or palato vaginal canal which extend from the lower most part of pterygo palatine fossa to the nasal pharynx am i clear now you know how many communication anteriorly anteriorly it is inferior orbital fissure behind it is foramen rotundum then there is pterygoid canal and then this is pharyngeal canal or palato vaginal canal is that right laterally if it jump out what was this pterygo maxillary pterygo maxillary fissure infra temporal fossa and if you go medially on the medial side this is sphenopalatine sphenopalatine palatine foramen jumping into nasal, nasal cavity right and then you know remember they i told you there was a bone here yes what was that bone palatine. pyramidal process of palatine. palatine bone now pyramidal process of palatine bone has a canal going between this and the maxilla this is maxilla this is pyramidal process of a palatine bone now between the palatine bone and the maxilla there is a long canal descending downward and this bony canal this is called greater palatine canal or simply palatine canal and actually through which some vessel the nerves go downward and they reach to the oral cavity so it means downward what is this palatine canal am i clear now let me tell you i'm standing in the where right pterygo palatine fossa here the interior end posterior end superior inferior right now interiorly if i look there what is there yes i'm communicating with the orbit through the inferior orbital fissure i put my hand in a hole on this side medial side my hand is in my hand is in in the nasal cavity through so fino palatine for a man i put this hand there hello yes my hand is going out through pterygo maxillary fissure and grabbing the things from infra temporal fossa so outside laterally infra temporal fossa through pterygo maxillary fissure medially nasal cavity through sphenopalatine, sphenopalatine. i can stuck my tongue into in inferior orbital fissure any question and i can stuck my foot down below what is this greater palatine canal and then i have to save my back not as back i have to save my back on my back here what is this going on foramen rotundum here what is going on pterygoid canal and then there is pharyngeal canal or palato vaginal canal am i clear to everyone there is no question okay just to confirm you really understood it i will make all these in a three dimensional way because once you are clear with this then we will move forward on more complicated thing okay i will make it little more fast i want to see can i draw it fast or not this is one pterygo palatine fossa i am drawing the two 
Two, okay, thank you. You know the counting. This is nose, right? Yes. Am I clear? This is the roof. Now, first of all, this is the roof of Trigopalate and Fossa. This is lateral wall. What are these walls? Medial, Medial walls. And here again it will be? Lateral wall. lateral wall, right? And this wall is? Interior wall. And behind that is? Posterior wall. Is that right? Now, we we'll start with it. This is a Yes. This is inferior orbital fissure. Right? This is inferior orbital fissure. Right? This is interior side, interosperior. Yes? Sir, intraorbital fissure and uh, inferior orbital fissure. They are same thing, except Dr. Najib sometimes mixes. Right? <laughs> Infraorbital fissure or inferior orbital fissure are one and the same thing. Right? I just wanted that you ask this question. Okay, so this is inferior orbital fissure. Okay, then here was in the front what was there maxilla, behind there was telecat process, and between them someone is looking outside to which fossa? Infratemporal fossa. What is this window? Terigo maxillary fissure, and it should be here also. So it is also opening into infra temporal fossa so what is this also terigo maxillary fissure right inferior orbital fissure at the interior wall at superior edge terigo maxillary fissures on the side outward is that right now what i'm going to do that i'm going to remove the roof of this to show you something inside right so i'm going to remove the roof from this diagram and I've removed the interior wall also now you see here it is which wall what is this medial wall and what is this this is also medial wall right this is medial wall and what is this wall this is lateral wall and here what is this wall lateral. lateral wall and what is this curve posterior, posterior wall. wall posteriorly there were three openings one opening was foramen rotundum and foramen rotundum then below and medially here is opening of the tiricate canal interior opening of tiricate canal and here was what your sexy canal what was that yes Palato vaginal canal. Palato vaginal canal. Is that clear? No question? Right? Now, just to take your test, I will draw the structure and you keep on telling me what are the openings. Okay, so tell me what is this wall? Yes, please. Lateral. 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 And what is this opening? Terigo. Maxillary fissure. What is this wall? Lateral. Rapidly. Lateral. Lateral. And what is this? Terigo maxillary fissure. Opening where? Infratemporal fossa. What is this wall, please? Medial. Yes. Medial. Medial. And what is this wall? Medial. Medial. And what is this foramen? Sphenopalatine. And what is this foramen? Spinopalatine opening where? Nasal cavity. Nasal cavity. Right? And what is this opening? Foramen? Rotundum. Opening where? Backward and upward into? Middle canal fossa. And what is this? Interior end of? Terigide canal. And what is this? Palato vaginal canal. And then there was from its interior wall and posterior wall there was a gap and there were tube going down you remember what was that tube greater palatine canals and if we really put the roof here if really 
make the roof here right and then what should be this yes clear I hope now you're really clear about this fossa the last two three minutes rapidly I will talk about I'm standing in this fossa first of all where it is located this fossa is a bony space on the lateral wall of the skull below the apex of orbit and just behind the supramedial part of maxilla medial to the infratemporal fossa and lateral to the posterior upper part of the nose and antero inferior to the middle canal fossa and in front of the pterygoid canal is it clear pterygoid process yes keep on correcting yes yes Uh, we are talking about sphenopalatine foramen which is present on the medial wall right of the foramen no uh, medial wall of the pterygopalatine fossa and of course is opening into lateral wall of the nose no listen listen just a minute hold on I understand what went wrong with you look this is your beautiful nose okay this is the lateral wall of nose this is the lateral wall of nose this is lateral this is lateral and what is this septum clear now you see sphenopalatine foramen communicate from the pterygopalatine fossa to the nasal cavity is it clear it communicates this foramen is present in the medial wall of pterygopalatine fossa and if you put your hand from here and touch something here what is this which wall of the nose lateral wall of the nose clear okay that's good now we come back openings right just imagine now I'm standing here right above where I put my hand infraorbital fissure communicating to the orbit in the nose through saphino palatine foramen Inf yes I'm putting my hand into infratemporal fossa through pterygo basilary fissure and I'm jumping on canals which are very narrow if they are little wide I will jump down what is that greater palatine canal going down to the oral cavity and on the back foramen rotundum and then what interior end of the pterygoid canal and below palatovaginal canal is that clear these are all boundaries first of all we know the location are you clear about the location of pterygopalatine fossa you are clear about its boundary you are clear about its relations are you clear about its communications how many communications are there there are two fissures in inferior orbital fissure and pterygomaxillary fissure there are two fissures there are two foramen saphenopalatine foramen and foramen rotundum there are three canals the pterygoid canal palatovaginal canal and greater palatine canal is that right and then important contents there are three important contents there in this fossa there are three important content which we will discuss into detail later but number one through this fossa I will make this fossa as a side view this is infraorbital fissure this is phenopalatine this is foramen rotundum, pterygoid canal, palatovaginal canal, greater palatine and pterygomaxillary fissure on this side okay now one thing which what are the important structure in it number one from here what is this maxillary nerve passes and so maxillary nerve and some of its branches number two like a monkey someone is hanging here what is this pterygopalatine ganglion and then of course its connections and branches right third from the lateral part from the pterygo maxillary fissure an artery enter into this and that is called maxillary artery right maxillary artery which enter and its branches third part of maxillary artery and its branches now after a break we'll go into detail of its content first of all we'll talk about pterygo palatine ganglion what are its connections and what are its distributions from where its sensory fiber come from where its secretomotor parasympathetic fiber come from where the vasomotor sympathetic fibers come and how these fibers are distributed through pterygopalatine ganglion 
and what is the special relationship with the mesothelial nerve and what are mesothelial nerve branches present over here and then we'll also talk about uh, third part of mesothelial artery and its branches and we'll be making a special emphasis on nerve supply to the lacrimal gland how it reaches from the brain stem to the trigopalatine ganglion and from here how it reaches eventually to the lacrimal gland right so important three components are what mesothelial nerve trigopalatine ganglion third part of mesothelial artery and of course then there are less important things like there are associated veins with the artery and there is lymphatics and there is of course little fat right you can forget last three things you can forget the fat forget the veins forget the lymphatics but you should never forget there is mesothelial nerve and it's some branches here you should never forget in this fossa there is pterygomesely pterygopalatine ganglion and you should never forget that in this fossa there is third part of mesothelial artery along with its branches let's have a break